G'day and welcome to the Ball Boys AFL Fantasy Podcast. I'm your host, Mitch Casey, and we are talking round two. We're going, we're talking trade targets. We're talking the big boys. Let's go.
G'day and welcome again to the Ball Boys AFL Fantasy Podcast. I'm your host, Mitch Casey, and you can find me on Twitter. And hopefully I don't have someone <laughs> singing over the top of me this time. Uh, and I'm joined by said singer, Luke Rogerson. How are you, mate? Ready for round two? I'm good, man. I'm ready for round two. We tried to explain it to the people last week that uh, we're just running into some copyright issues. So we thought we'd get in an acapella group to, uh, to sing our intro for us for that uh, little waiting room music. But... You couldn't hear any of that because the waiting yeah. room music was still on. So <laughs> that's right, yeah. I, I'm just working couldn't in to make sure that that's uh, not the case today. It yeah. appears that we are Looks good. Looks like we are good. <laughs> it's not a ball boys live show without a bit of technical difficulties, Correct. isn't it? Correct. So, uh, yeah. We're, we're cheating a little bit today as well because we, I mean, it doesn't feel good, but we've got the Thursday show. We've, we've got prior yes. commitments tomorrow, so it, it feels as though I haven't earned the beers that we're about to have, but you know, I'll take one for the team and I'll have them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> take one for the team. Oh, poor you, mate. Poor you. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we are obviously recording on a Thursday night. We have, like, we're going down, down into New South Wales, into Blues Territory to... Mm. We're running a triathlon this, or running, swimming, cycling, a triathlon well, this weekend, and uh, heading down early tomorrow, so yeah. we won't have the beautiful setup that we have, and uh, wanted to still pump out a live show, so we're doing it today. Unfortunately, you're also a very busy man, you, you coach not only your AFL fantasy team, but yeah. a, a touch footy team, so we're doing this before the teams get announced, so... Look, I don't think round two is going to throw up a huge amount of curveballs for us. Well, now that you've said that, it certainly will. Touch wood. <laughs> um, I think for some rookies, maybe like a Clark or potentially even a Lazaro might be a little bit at risk. But uh, fingers crossed, touch wood, hopefully yeah. it's still relevant by the time the teams get announced. That's it. I, mate, I'll be honest with you. I haven't had a chance to scratch myself this week. So the only reason I'm here is to get you as well as the people in the comments to tell me what the hell I should do with my team because I've barely thought fantasy and that's not great when you have to front up and do a podcast. Uh, <laughs> well, well, I think I think it's pretty, I guess, straightforward in terms of like the idea of what we're trying to do. We're trying to either get in uh, one of these mid-prices that we missed or one of the rookies that we missed. Um, some people might be tempted by the premiums that went big in that yeah. first round. You didn't have them. I would hesitate to go that way unless you do have someone like a James Sicily, um, someone who really stunk it up, had a role change, and you're trying to switch him out and get a different premium. That's the only premium I can really get behind trading out. Um, but for the most part, we're trying to look at these mid-prices. We're trying to facilitate cash generation. It's yep. the early part of the year. Now, it is best 18, so it is a little bit different. And that strategy is, I guess, what has worked in the past. There is an argument to say that it, that may not be the right strategy this year because obviously if you're if you're looking at getting rookies, chances are they're not going to be in your best eighteen. They're not going to help you score. But I do. The, what I come back to was it's four rounds yeah. over an over an entire season. That's this best eighteen, and the cash is still going to be super important. Uh, for the majority of upgrade season in the back half of the year. Yeah, cash is still going to be king. Hey, like we always see at the back half of the season that those teams that have the highest team values are the ones that peak at the right time, which is, is what you want. Um, and like you say, it, you know, you could go to that sort of guns and rookie strategy, but I'd, I'd sort of say I don't think we have enough rookies that are playing with confident positions and with confident cash and to go to something like that either. But uh, we need to find value regardless. We need to find value. So we're going to go through some trade targets um, and talk about the different, I guess, um, designations you would give them. So yep. some mid prices, some cash cows and some premiums. Let's start with the premiums first. Yep. I think, like we said, not going to go there, but if you do have a James Sisley or if you've got two um, uh, failed mid prices like an Ollie Wines and maybe a John Newcomb, maybe you want to go one down and one up. That could be a play. There's only three that I would really entertain. If you don't have Max Gorn and you've got a, a, a Sherry and a Grundy yep. and you want to get Grundy up to a Max Gorn, I would tick that off. I think that would be probably the top priority for me because I just, I've just i been so big on Max Gorn. He came out and did what I think he can do. He's going to be featured in the big boys a bit later again. Um, so I can see that he's still value, I, I believe, as well. I think he's still got like 15 points of upside. Isaac Heaney, number two. Now, oh, this man. one is tough because three games, and then he got his bye. Yeah. We've seen two games, but with every game, and if we see it again um, this weekend, Every game that he puts up like he's done so far, the more I think that this is not going to be just a short-term play, and the more I think this has a potential to be, you know, your F2, your F1, 2, 3, and a top six forward, essentially, yeah. for the rest of the season. I can't see the scenario where he goes from playing footy this good to playing no midfield minutes. Yeah. And in a forward line where we, we 
have essentially shit options down there, I think he's going to be a top six forty. He goes close enough to being a top six forward when yeah. he's playing forward. Yeah. So um, the other thing too is y- you might be feeling, oh, I've missed the boat, I've missed the boat, I'll just wait, I'll just wait. But if he gives you five rounds of that, like y- you could be so far behind the eight ball there that your season could be away from you. He's got bit. Essendon this week. Yeah. Then I believe he's got Richmond. Yeah, Richmond. Easy. And then... West Coast uh, are the oh, next three. Man. So all games where you think Sydney should win. This um, is an example of a round zero gift, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, really... it really, it really, it turned from a play that I initially thought might have been like a, a five week kind of cash grab, get the scores, yeah. eject, to now something that I'm considering. I, I probably, again, three weeks, still a long time. Anything can happen, but so, it's more than likely looking like he's going to be someone we want to keep in our side. So okay. he's the second premium that I would consider getting in if you don't have him already. And the third one, maybe this is a bit reactionary, but Caleb Sarong is a player that I would tick off if, for example, you wanted to get a giant Newcomb up to him. It's number okay. one, because I think when we saw that move from Brayshaw go out to the wing in the preseason... yeah. Uh, Sarong elevated in my books as that number one guy for Frio. We talked to Mini Monk. He talked about Caleb Sarong being that number one guy. Um, and obviously, last week he came out, broke the record for Frio in disposals, had 46 touches. Ridiculous. Um, he just looks like a beast. Yeah. This week he comes up against North Melbourne. Again, he will feature in the big boys a bit later. Um, so, And he's not... He's priced at, I think, like 112 or something like that. It is expensive. Yeah. Um, this but he also has that perfect buy around, no early buys, you know. So he does tick a few other boxes than just a regular kind of uber price guy. That to me seems extremely luxurious. It does. So, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it's it's not a play, but that for me would be you've got nothing else to fix up. You've absolutely nailed your, your starting lineup and you maybe, oh, Newcomb. Yeah. P- perhaps yeah. I, I, I would think there. very few people should be in that position, but... If if you wanting to look for a premium, that is your strategy, and you want to go a little bit against the grain. I think Sarong of the midfielders is the one to go to. Mid prices next. This is yes. where I think most people will be shopping to fix up those mid prices. So we'll talk the ruck line first. Tristan uh, Sherry off the bat. We are he's kicking my ourselves. One. We're yeah. kicking ourselves. I think he's our number one mainly because um, you and then I jumped on the bandwagon of talking mainly all preseason. You know him over Grundy. Grundy fooled us. But um, is there is there any scenario where the roles are reversed this there, weekend? There is. I mean, I think there's something to be said about Grundy playing at the SCG. Yeah. Um, obviously, that's where he put up his 118 or whatever he did against Max. Um, smaller ground. Uh, and there's something to be said about that. He only plays at the SCG once between now and his bye round. So and that's this round against Essendon. I'm still super confident. He, uh, Sherry, I'm, I'm talking about. Went his 121, I think he had, 121, off the lowest amount of ruck contests in the entire comp so far this year. 66 ruck contests North Melbourne had against GWS, which is about 30 or just under 30 ruck contests below what an average game would would do. Think about adding another 30 uh, ruck contests on there and what Tristan Sherry could do. So now Briggsy has been a bit... Uh, there's been some big scores in him so far. So okay. Darcy Cameron went big against him yep. in opening round. So there was a probably a positive matchup from like a, a ruck v ruck uh, situation there. But in terms of that fewer ruck contest, he obviously got a lot of points around the ground as well. So that just fills me with a lot of confidence. He's so cheap. He's um, doesn't have the early buy. So you're also fixing up a buy issue there if you have a Heaney if you've got a James Jordan you've got a Dacos you want to start to cash you want to start to sort that out so I think it's just it's one that I am absolutely not overthinking um, and just pulling that move the next few I could lump probably the next four or five guys together at number two I've got Nat Fife probably the main reason here is that his role of all of these players is probably the most friendly he also is in the forward line he plays North Melbourne this week, which I'm a bit torn on whether that's a good thing or a bad thing because we <laughs> saw what happened with like a player like Wines last week against West Coast. Yeah. Five strikes me as that kind of player that maybe if it is just completely, you know, a uh, uh, game over by halftime that he might just kind of tick the legs over a little bit. Next, um, I mean, ne- neither of us watched the um, the Frio game closely on the weekend. It was the Sunday Twilight game. Um, but what I did watch, I was impressed by Fife's ability to still push out and get some plus sixes as well. So I, off the top of my head, I don't know exactly how many marks he took. But 
when I was watching, I felt like he was like getting out to space for a little bit of an opportunity there. Yeah, um, yeah probably the contested stuff does hurt him, but th- this is one where you can hide behind probably a pretty p- bit of high ownership as well. I think so. And um, yeah, why didn't you start with him, mate? Like it was it was an easy far out. I mean, there's a world where Nat Fife is close <laughs> enough to a top ten forward. Um, you know, if he averages 85... It's not hard to be close to a top 10 forward, is it? That's enough, you know? And and I think as a full-time midfielder, despite obviously his fantasy flaws, that'll get you to get it done. So of all the players that I'd be happy to hold to the buy round, the mid-buy rounds, I think Nat Fife is probably the top of that list, which is why he's at number two. Is Is the sub still a risk there? Do you think there's still... Maybe, maybe. I mean, they've got a lot it's of injuries at the moment. Uh, so there's a few other like inexperienced players coming in yeah. to the side. So that kind of just slightly elevates my confidence a little bit. But He played a high uh, percentage game time as well um, on the weekend. Oh, like yeah. when I say high, he played yeah, like 80, over 80%. 80% so it, didn't, yeah. it wasn't like he was in cotton wool. And like you said, Frio have just had three defenders basically yeah. chopped. So we'll probably talk about what that means for Hayden Young later on. But yeah, yeah I think five's a good trade-in target. Um, the next one here, I think most people have at the top of their list in Riley Bonner. Mm. And I don't mind it. I, th- I think it's a good trade-in. There's just, I don't know, this little gut feeling thing here that just has me not wanting to do it until I see Sinclair in the Sinclair. side. Uh, we have seen the teams, and that's also tonight. So you, if you're making that move, you've got to do that tonight, which is another reason that kind of, I don't know, makes me a little bit more cautious. Now, I think it's a great trade, and especially if you're looking for that midfielder. The other thing, structure-wise, it, it helps more if you're going from like a wines down to him and you've got him at M5. I don't know how much I love him sitting at M6 because... We'll talk about the rookie roulette later. Sanders, McKercher, Sharp, uh, Roberts. Yeah. Like, how much of the lock... Now, he's got a good role, but how much of a lock is it that he outscores those players? They're all probably our best rookies. I think we want them all on field, if possible, or at least three of them. Yeah, I, I do get the impression that with Sinclair back, it probably just takes takes the top off his scoring. I so, so too. I mean, if, if he can do what he did last week, it's just it's absolutely fantastic. But... You, you kind of start to think, okay, well, how are those points going to be distributed? So you've got Wanganine Miller, you've got Sinclair, obviously, who are going to get theirs when they, you know, when they play Sinclair. I expect him to be a hundred to one hundred five guy, and Wanganine Miller, are, you know, hundred or just shy. Like suddenly, the points, where are all the points coming from? If he can be an eighty-five guy, it's still it's still a good pick. Yeah. Um. And oh I, yeah, I, I think he goes about. I've got him projected for like eighty. Okay. Which is about twenty. He's about twenty unders of that. So it's still a good pick. From from here, he's still twenty unders. Yes, from here, he's still twenty. So unders. I that I mean that's where my mind's been going this week when I've had a chance to think about it is is probably to to Bonner and I feel like quite a few people might be making that jump. Um, yeah, it, it's the being locked in first game that that scares me. And you know I I'm a big boner guy. Uh, Mini Monks just chimed in there with his bit of Frio insight mm. saying that it looks like Jago O'Meara or Will Brody will be the sub for Frio this week and there's a chance that he gets subbed out. So that's one to watch. It's good Definitely. insight there. Definitely. This is a good thing as well as um, obviously we're not going to be able to answer everyone's comments, but um, it's awesome to have people like Mini Monk and, yeah. and I know Bale sometimes gets in there. I get yeah. guesties in the chat as well. So throw your questions in there and um, if we can't answer them, somebody more well credentialed than hey, us. Hey, we'll, hey, we'll don't answer. don't pump us down, mate. mate it's it's hats or no hats, and we are in the no hats camp. So am I, am I ahead of Mini Monk at the moment, or is he? <laughs> has he got me? Yeah? <laughs> he's one he's week. got bloody hats everywhere. The guy needs to find new You're hat already, hangers, and you got oh, one shit, week. He's ahead of me anyway. He's, <laughs> <laughs> he's got me by twenty two points. Fuck, I thought I had him. Uh, I couldn't remember what he scored. Uh, so get yeah. your comments in there. There's people to answer your comments for sure. Um, let's talk about the team. So uh, just while we're on um, Riley Bonner there, because there was the team's name for Saint. Hilda and Collingwood, obviously, that play tonight. Yeah. Brad Crouch was omitted, um, and so was okay. Lance Collard. Now, they brought in Sinclair and Zach Jones. A lot of people see the Brad Crouch omission and they go, okay, Sinclair, midfield. But... Zach Jones. Zach Jones, midfield, right? He only right? plays midfield. Um, so, do you think Sinclair comes in and plays, like, more midfield than defence with someone like a Bonner being there? Or do you think he is still doing a bit of both? Or what do you, what's your read on that? Oh, my gut feel is like a little bit of both, but didn't, correct me if I'm wrong, didn't we see at the start of last season he played more midfield time and then there was actually an uptick in his scoring at the back half of the year he when they pushed him back? He went more back at the back half. Yeah, yeah. so uh, if, you know, I don't know what's happened at St Kilda over, over the course of the preseason, but my expectation would be that he'd probably stay in 
predominantly a back role. Yeah. But it's be- if they if they feel like Bonner is giving them everything they need back there, then why doesn't Sinclair become a midfielder? So yeah, the other that thing- makes it tough. I think that's why your point about watching one week is good, but yeah. how much is he going to get away from you by next week? You're going to feel as good about making that trade. Well, this is where, and I was, I think I was singing a bit of a different tune on Monday's podcast, but just thinking about it a bit more and just some of the options we have, I'm coming more around to if you don't have it, prioritizing the rookies, prioritizing your sharps and your Dempseys over. These kind of players, because on most of them, as good as they went last year, I still have question marks. There's still a few factors going around with the Sinclair, with Fife's sub potential, and obviously mm. his lack of a ceiling. Um, you know, other players that we'll speak about in a second. There's you know Crouch and his like the conditions really suiting him. Jack Billings had 15 marks. Not going to have that every week. Um, he's actually got a tough run after this week's game. Um, D'Ambrosio, like. You're not going to expect 30 points from Sicily every week, and he was tagged a bit. So Amon will get his. So, Amon so you're just kind of going. There's certainty in the rookie. <laughs> there's cash more and... certainty in their cash generation being there. They don't have to go out and perform week in week out. Yeah, okay. um, so that that's just got me leaning a little bit more that way. It's a it's a less risky play. Um, but the reward is definitely still with the mid prizes because they can give you the scoring plus the cash generation, which we did speak about. Um, but that's just sort of my flag there. I, I just don't know if I want to be riding a Riley Bonner at M5 through to his buy round, yeah. uh, which is, I think, what you kind of would hope to by getting in these types of players. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Picture frames are crooked, apparently. That's all, I'm, all I can see now. Which one? Shane. Oh, we're going to have to bloody get, out get the and spirit level out. Get, the, get on the left-handed hammer, mate. I'll Shane, fix him up. You've got, you got the eye there, mate. That's um, You've got a good eye. Yeah, I, I, thought my, I thought my fat head was covering him all right. So um, so what are your thoughts on those other guys we touched on recently? Sorry, our next one, I've got Matt Crouch. I've then got Jack Billings, Massimo D'Ambrosio at six, and then Perkins at seven. Um, I know a lot of people are keen on Billings, but I think there's maybe a little bit of a trap element there with Billings. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because you go from absolutely not keen on him when he's the sub one week, he gives you 140 and suddenly it's like, oh, well, everything's forgiven. You, mm. you mentioned the marks, that's probably enough to, to make me think that he's not going to be giving you that ceiling every week. And well, obviously, then, yeah. But like, can he, is, is he someone that goes 80? He can, but if you've, been, if you've been the sub already in the season and you give a couple of like subpar performances, what's to say you can't be straight back? Um, sub par performances. Yeah, oh, man, I'm doing them. I don't even know these days. It's just that's how good it is. <laughs> the other thing with Crouch too is like that that game on the weekend for me, y- you probably can't read into it just because of how moist it was. Mm-hmm. The heavens opened up, and I think there might be some sort of statistical anomalies in there in terms of the, how the, certain players yeah, performed. The, the stoppages were like we said with North being the lowest; they were the highest in that game for the season yeah. so far, um, and I think that suited him to a T. Uh, might be a little bit different against the Cats this week, although they do return to Adelaide. Uh, but I do think that favours more those Rankins and um, Dawsons of the world, uh, a bit more so than the Crouch. Um, so you Think about it this way. If you're Adelaide, you don't want Crouch scoring 120, you want Dawson scoring 120. Yeah. So that's naturally going to correct itself. So I, I think those probably going to see Crouch more around that. I, I think of month. these mid-prices, I think Crouch is the, the safest scoring option. Of all Even them. with the low time on ground, do you oh, th- I still think still, so. He's, yeah. he's so good with his points per minute. His points per minute is so high. Yeah. But obviously, he's probably, I think he is the most expensive out of all of these, um, so has the least amount of capacity to make cash. Yeah, um, okay. So I think he's priced already at like an 87 or something like that. So he's probably only got maybe 10 points more of upside, maybe 13, 15 at most. Yeah. Um, whereas I think Bonner has like that. 20 to 30 points of upside potentially in his price. Uh, Jack Billings, we said at number five, yep. D'Ambrosio and Archie Perkins. What about those last two, D'Ambrosio and Archie Perkins? What are your thoughts on them? Archie Perkins was crazy, eh? He so, went nuts. So he's gone from, and uh, I think I said this on, on Monday, like I'd like to get some insight from Essendon fans, but he went from zero CBAs Nothing. and a score of 38 in, yeah. in their pracky match to like looking like a Brownlow medalist yeah. in a... in a, a um, hundred points on top of his... Yeah, in a great game for Essen as well. So the thing obviously is Parrish. So are we expecting Parrish back? Is it... I think he's expected back this week. Okay, I, so I think it... he's he's expected back. Um, but I don't know how you go from playing a game like that to then not getting any midfield time. I think he's in the midfield, 100%. I think he's probably their third or fourth guy in there. Yeah. Um, they also like... 
Setterfield and Merritt, all they all, all three of them tunned up against Hawthorne. Okay. Um, so it was probably a very friendly matchup. Uh, yeah. Who do they have? Oh, bloody hell. Um, Essendon has Sydney this week at the SCG. They're, you know, Sydney are heavy favourites in this game. So they're going to find it a bit tougher. Uh, yeah, I don't I think they're going to let Archie Perkins do his thing. Yeah, like so... Like he did last week anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, again, more expensive on that pricier side of things, so that's why he's down the bottom. D'Ambrosio, again, I, I just feel like some of those other back guys, you know, Amons and Sicilies, are going to elevate. He had his career high in touches, didn't have that many marks. So, um, again, if you've got someone to fix up like a, a, a Butterick, then I think that's a fine option in defense, but I wouldn't be going out of my way to get D'Ambrosio if it's not a defensive need for you. If that makes sense, certainly. So, let's Be- talk about the cash cows then. Before we talk about the cash cows, can I just say thank you so much to everyone who's um, who's tuned in as well. So we got 220 people in hey! here, which on a Thursday afternoon is <laughs> yeah, I, I awesome. wasn't expecting it. So, so really, really appreciate it. And um, if you haven't uh, yet subscribed, please consider doing so. Yeah, hit that um, big old subscribe button. We'll be getting to questions later um, yeah. when obviously we go through our trade targets, the big boys. We'll talk about a bit of, a bit of rookie roulette and some hot takes. Uh, but if you if you really desperately want, you can throw in a super chat there and we'll uh we'll get to those um let's talk cash cows yes i've got two listed here yeah the two i think that are probably the must-haves or mm. maybe not must-haves but the priorities jeremy sharp i've got listed at number one with ollie dempsey at number two well, the, the thing about sharp is his job security has just gone through the roof because You'd have to think so. Freo, you know got the bloody infirmary down yeah. there they're picking pieces up off their back line so I think that that's really positive and it pissed me off a little bit that I didn't start with him last week. I went yeah. um, went with the soup, Campbell's. Um, and that was still like, that's, that wasn't bad. That didn't work out bad. Um, the tough thing is he's a more expensive rookie. So it starts to leave a bit of think of a sour yeah. taste in your mouth. When yeah. you, if, you, if you're trading out someone like a Jai Clark, one of those, you've got to find cash to do that. Yeah, when you have to find um, cash to get to get the rookie in, it makes it a little bit tough. So especially with other fix-ups to do, it's not something I'm going to be doing. But if you were in that position where maybe the only fix-ups that you were looking at were like rookie fix-ups, then I completely agree with you. I think I'd be getting him in. Yeah, I'm prioritizing him because I think also he's someone that I am very comfortable and happy having on my field this yeah. week um, against North Melbourne under the roof. He has had two games in the past where he's gone 110 plus. Uh, would you believe it? Um, so he has that ceiling. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, mind you, it was two games a few years ago when you know everything kind of went his way, but... You know, 79 uh, against a Brisbane team, if you can pop that, um, if you could do an 80 again, that's probably going to be as part of your best 18. So yeah. you're going to get some quick cash generation. Like I said, his job security looks good, and I think he's a fieldable player this week. Number two, I have Ollie Dempsey. Um, we didn't catch that game, but during the week, uh, I'm not quite as busy as you. I've got more free time up my sleeve. So I went back and watched <laughs> that game. And this guy looks like an absolute player. We should have watched um, a bit more of that game. Yeah. Right? You were you were just bloody pining over I was Jordan Dawson. Watching and me, just me vice every and, second. Yeah, yeah. Hate watching, I like to call it. Um, so <laughs> Dempsey, yeah. he like you said, he's bought himself a lot of time in Geelong. Um, and he works extremely hard to find open space. Um, and honestly, he could have had a bigger score. There was, I think he had another two or three uh, shots on goal. One went off the side of his boot uh, for a behind. Um, uh, I think another one, or maybe he went out in the full, and another one hit the post. And then he also had a, a pretty tough kick, mind you, uh, from the boundary. And, and, you know, it hit the wrong side of the ball. So he could have actually had like a 110 kind of a score there if he kicked a bit straighter. Um, so he is someone that I think... Uh, I feel not too bad about his scoring potential despite being a, a forward um, in in the team, just looking at him, you know he's got great job security at Geelong. He's because, got a haircut because if you have that like slicked down like the blonde, blonde hair with a headband, it's like well you can't not you're, get picked. You're, at you're Geelong. part of the team. You're in. You're at, a cat. So uh, man, I can't imagine that going wrong at all. <laughs> the, the Beach like Boys down there at the the counter. What's like? Let's. I want to selfishly ask you a question here. So obviously, yeah. Cam McKenzie appears to have been a foul pick. Had the role. Sam Mitchell said. See you later, mate. Yep. You've given us nothing in the first half. Is there is it too aggressive and like a cashed up play to go, okay, well, if I'm not super confident on like Cam McKenzie with DPP to a Bonner or something like that to go, I'm just going to prioritize the rookie and I'm going to go Cam McKenzie to a Sharp on a week where I know I'm only counting my best 18 scores and typically maybe going that big of a downgrade and pocketing some cash with like a Grundy Cherry 
as my other trade. Yeah. Is it like, is that too ridiculous in a week where only the uh, best 18 I don't count? think it's ridiculous at all. Um, well, let me ask you this question. Who scores more this week, Sharp or Bonner? Well, I think I still say Bonner, but, I, say I, Bonner, I, understand but it's the, like, I understand the premise yeah. of what you're saying is like, yes, in a, in a world you could see it being the other way around. I could easily so, see that happening and yeah. you've got the guaranteed cash generation for someone who's 200k cheaper. So Yeah, man, um, that's interesting. Hey, that's, I, that's, that's where I'm leaning this okay. stage. Like, I'm, I'm going to be probably... Unless we see some rookies dropped, then I might maybe even far out hold McKenzie. Um, but I, I might be well, sitting Will Day, on... Will Day's confirmed out for like seven weeks now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I, I might be going into next round with like 250K uh, in the bank, which is not oh, something I normally do. But I man. think I just want to prioritize getting those rookies. And I think that someone like a Dempsey, someone like a, a, a Sharp is uh, worthwhile yeah. chasing if you don't have them. It's um, interesting. But I, it, it could be the wrong strategy that like Bonner could come out and go absolutely nuts again um, and I'll be you know kicking <laughs> but, the wall tonight but Boner going nuts you reckon oh yeah <laughs> sometimes boners do go nuts yeah he, he goes hard at least we know that oh, um, he certainly <laughs> rose to the occasion <laughs> let's yeah let's go. hope he doesn't go limp tonight um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got nothing else I'm scrambling I'm scrambling <laughs> we could keep going I reckon alright <sighs> let's talk while we're on the the, the rookie uh, discussion points. Um, uh, we're going to keep doing this for the first few rounds. Big of the boys are coming, by the way. If there's anyone who's just going play the big boy music, just give us a sec. We're probably just, a couple of minutes just teasing, just, just teasing. Bring you along. You know bring much, you along. You know how much um, Mitch loves these big boys. So. Rookie roulette. I think a lot of people are going to have this question. Yep. Uh, Jeremy Sharp versus Riley Sanders versus Matt Roberts versus <laughs> Colby McKercher. Oh, oh man. Who are uh, rank them in, in well, order? Who McC- do you think? McKercher's McKercher's top okay, of the so three. So lock it, lock so it in. Take McKercher. away So right. it's Sharp, Sanders, Roberts. So the, for me, the the next order probably goes Roberts with the role. The other thing that I think maybe Roberts elevates above Sanders is what the fuck did Sanders get? Did Sanders- <laughs> so you know, Sharp has that scoring potential. I think the I just think it's a little more volatile than maybe those others in the good role. Yeah. Oh. Are your thoughts different? Oh, they a little bit. Now okay. remember we we're best 18. We are. So what I'm viewing these rookies or cash cows, I'm I'm trying to think ceiling because okay. if they pop for a ceiling, that could be the difference. If they suck and they don't go so good, then um off that they won't count it. It's all good. Okay. So I'm trying to look at them in the case of, okay, who is the most likely or who has the biggest ceiling out of these guys? Like you said, Colby McKercher, he's already done a 90 plus. Yep. Lock him in. Yep. Um, Sharp went 79, so he was the second highest scorer out of these guys last week. Yep. Plus he's got North Melbourne under the roof. He's done 110s in the plus. So I actually think he's the next one. How long, how long ago in the past are we talking? We're, we're pulling data from a previous team yeah, like but in I'll, previous it's years. It's the same role that he was playing. Um, he's arguably in a better wing, side. Wing role. Wing role. He was in the Suns. Obviously, he's probably in a We don't be- like the wing better. role. We don't like it, but it can be fruitful in, in certain games. Um, so And under the roof it. You know, versus Melbourne, I mean North Melbourne, who were the lowest stoppage team. Okay. So yeah, yeah. there's something to it's it. It's roulette for a reason. It's roulette for a reason, and then blow uh, on your dice and throw them out. I'm gonna put. <laughs> That's not roulette. <laughs> What's roulette? <laughs> Roulette's the the wheel one, right? What's that? Where you? What was that? Oh no, you know you, you flick the ball around, right? And it, it rolls around, and you got to... Oh, red and black. Yeah, yeah, red and black. Yeah. How the fuck do I not know what roulette? Demons, Too know? busy playing poker, mate. <laughs> got my poker face on. Um, so me. I've actually got I've got Sanders ahead of Roberts, I think. Okay. Because if he doesn't get sucked, oh, if he, but mate, you're not. He, he was on track for a big score, and if you he gets subbed, know then whatever. Co- okay, he's you do like, know who his coach is. Right? I know who his coach is, you're and if he gets get subbed, okay, his price, his game will, will probably fall out. You're going to get bad votes. So if he bet. doesn't get subbed, it could be big. Uh, so I'm going to back him in down at Ballarat. I think there'll be lots of um, uh, stoppages and things like that. So that is my pick there. What about the forward line? Uh, Wilson tonight, Harley Reid. Versus Lazaro. Those are the three we, we talked about last week. Who's West Coast? Uh, West, West Coast, Coast is versus GWS. Giants, yeah. I think I'm still Lazaro last. Yeah. W- I mean, with the roulette, it doesn't matter if Wilson plays first. It's just like you're locking one of them away. Is there yeah. a benefit to going Reed because you just get to wait and see more things happen? Yeah. Well, we, uh, maybe people like, are like doing uh, putting two rookies on field. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know, Wilson Reed, flip the coin. I'm probably going to be fielding Wilson and Reed this week for myself with two rookies in the forward line. Um, like I said, I've got a bit of cash on my on my bench, so I'm going an extra rookie this week. So for whatever it's worth, <laughs> I'd be going Reed first. Big boys, are you we're, ready? Yeah, where's yeah, the graphic well, I'm ready? I'm just making sure you're ready, mate. <laughs> I'm okay. Ready. Oh, all oh, right. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> no, I just clicked transition. Oh no, what's happened? Oh, here? we've frozen, and my face is frozen like that. Oh, okay. I don't know if people are still hearing us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's going on, Streamlabs? Oh, give me a fucking spell. Hold up, just check check the thing wait, and wait. see if we're I'll... frozen still. Yeah, <laughs> we're frozen, but I don't. Oh my god, <laughs> we're still we're still speaking. Fuck off. Oh, you're joking. Okay, so what do we do? Okay, let me try to go back to the live. Yeah, go back to a live or, or a different screen, maybe. Why is it doing this? <laughs> Classic Ball Boys live <laughs> show. Me, do we? Surely we don't have to end the stream. This is a fuck. Yeah, well, it looks like they can hear us. It's just the video that stuff. Okay, hold up. Let me restart the camera. You keep talking to the people, and uh, <laughs> I'll get the video back on. I don't think we're even anymore. Oh, wait, wait. Wait. Okay. Are we back on? We're back on? I maybe. think we might be back on. Give it, <laughs> give it a chance. Fucking maybe. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Wait. Wait on. Yeah, I think it'll come back. I think we're good. I think we're good. They're on a bit of a delay, so we'll, we'll keep it rolling. Thank you, guys. If you stuck with us, let's go. What is happening here? But I still want to... I'm not stopping until this big boy's music gets fucking played. All right. All right. Come here on, we people. go. Oh, wait. Yeah, I think we're good. Looks like it's on more of a delay than it normally is, which is weird. Okay. Okay. Let's see how we go here. Ready? Fucking big boy. I can't. This is... All right, close down screen. Like We'll, we'll, we'll restart it. We'll restart it. No, look, it's going to go back to live, but we just won't play big boys thing. We'll just play the uh, the audio. This one's fucking annoying because it's not even our, yeah. our thing. This is Streamlabs. Yeah, this is our software. Just being shit. Okay. Play your big boys music, Mitch. All right, we'll do it old school. We'll have to go without the graphic. <laughs> All right, where is my big boys music? Fuck. <laughs> the big boys. <laughs> all right, we're I'm glad you did the sunglasses bit, mate. It was worth it. If you hung around through all of that nonsense, worth it. All right. Let's talk <laughs> about the big boys. We are going number one. Oh it's a surprise God. because it's not on the screen this week because obviously tech difficulties. Number one this week, and I promise I'm not reacting after a big score, but it is Caleb Sarong. <laughs> uh, Caleb Sarong is number one. How did we get, how did we go from more viewers after that shit show? There's more viewers here. Oh everyone, my everyone god! Everyone likes just a little bit of humble pie, you know. Uh, <laughs> so, all right. So we're talking about get on get on get on target. Here, oh, mate. Sorry, we're going, we're going to the big boys. We got sorry. number one, okay. Caleb Sarong. Coming up against North Melbourne, like we said, he's a number one mid. They gave up a shit ton of points. Tom Green went 140 plus last week. Caleb Sarong, this is why I tick him off, trading him in, because I think he will go big again. I still don't see them tagging uh, first uh, few games of the season. Yeah. Number two, Tom Green. This way, I can see a bit of a run with roll with someone like a Jimby, which they did do last year. I think it was at the start of the year, round two or three or something like that. Yeah, okay. um, and he did have a lower score, but... The form he's in, I think you've got to back him in. Number three is Tim English. Tim English. Now, he's going up against Witsy, which you would typically think of as a hard matchup. Now, Wits has given up some points the first couple of rounds that they've played. Don't. Why are you still wearing, <laughs> still wearing sunglasses? It's the bit, man. It's the bit. Oh, sorry. Um, and he, uh, Tim English, if we talk about they're playing at Mars, right? In the last three years, they've played six games at Mars Stadium. That's fucking a lot of travel time. And every Ruckman except for um, Steph Martin and 
who's the other Bulldogs? Um, the guy who plays with Port now. What I'm blanking. Oh, um, sweet. Yeah, Jordan Sweet. They're the only two Ruckmen that in those six games didn't turn up. Uh, every time English has played there in the last few years, he's turned up. Riley O'Brien has turned up every time he's played there. Loves the altitude. The the stoppages at that ground is off the chain. Um, so they're going to be high, high stoppages. So okay. Tim English is going to be uh, a big one in that one, I believe. He's up, against, th- a, up against a bit of a beast of a stoppage Ruckman, but isn't he? He is, but he's been leaking points recently. Um, okay. Naismith went bloody nearly 80 against him. Um, and I think, who did they play last week? The uh, Riley O'Brien Moistman. turned up last week as well. So okay. he's okay. Um, he's leaking points. So I think that Tim English can capitalise there yep. uh, and tackle really well. Number four, I've got Andrew Brayshaw, Sarong's teammate. I think there was a time where I thought maybe he'd get a bit more inside time if they did send um, Hayden Young back. I don't think that's going to happen this week because of some of the inclusions that are coming in. At least I believe teams may change this. Please um, don't ruin Hayden Young for but us. I think after Hayden one game. Young will be in there. Their midfield was so good last year. So I, I, I did have Brayshaw a little bit higher before, but I still expect him to be a bit more wing. And at number five for tonight, I have Nick Dacos. I can see tonight a Wind Hager going to him oh. and trying to stop him. It's his 50th. There's been a lot of hype going the top 49 bloody best games of his career. There was a whole countdown on on uh, Fox 40 the other day. So a countdown for 50 games. Yeah, so it's 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 he's bigger than Ben Hur this week. He's so I think there might be a bit of a little bit of a letdown. Okay. Uh, but he is still Nick Dacos. He is still versus the Saints, so he can go big. So those are the top five big boys. I'll put these away now. <laughs> you looked. You look. Did you ever watch CSI Miami? Uh, no, but I can get the picture. So Horatio Kane, he used to do his like his big intro scene and then he would like rip the glasses off and then the theme music would come in. So Maybe I've got to do the opposite of go. The, I might get to some off. theme music. It's like the theme music. We've mu- got theme music. You know, it's like, wow! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's do that. Anyway. All right. Uh, six it. through 10. Uh, I don't have any of those guys in the top five in my team, but so this is where I'm going to be doing my VC. Jordan Dawson, I think he's going to bounce back. Yep. Back in Adelaide, I think better conditions. I think he will go good against a, a Geelong team whose midfield is not what it used to be uh, in years gone past. Max Gorn against Hawthorne. Now, Hawthorne are not the best matchup for Rucks, but his history against Hawthorne, it is his highest averaging disposal team. So that was a little fun little stat that I found for him. So I still think he goes pretty good. Bont has slid a little bit because of the Mars game. Now, he has not scored very well at Mars in years gone by. Now, I do think he could go well if there's a lot of stoppages and he tackles really hard. But I think that's more of like a trelaw Liber kind of game more than a Bont and Pelly kind of game. But he could still go big. But I think the Mars thing is not a good thing for him. And then 9 and 10, I've got Zach Butters and Rosie for the Port Adelaide Power versus Richmond this week. I am tipping Butters over Rosie. Because as we noted a few times, Rosie is spending a bit more time forward, I think. And I don't think he's going to kick a goal. Well, maybe he will still. But he's less likely to kick a goal against Richmond than he did against West Coast. So <laughs> That goal at the end really hurt you, didn't it? <laughs> it's, well, they scored within three points within each other. And <laughs> Zach did, Butters yeah. had the most ridiculous free kick against uh, last week. That was where all he got time. called by, for a high tackle, which <laughs> I, just, I still can't get over. So I am... Just going to favour Zach Butters as a, a more midfield-centric player than a Rose who maybe plays a bit more forward. And that was... Woo! The big boys, there you go. The big boys. I'm, I'm nervous to go to Spicy Takes because I don't know whether we should try and change the screen again. Do you think, oh. we, should just, do you think we should just play the soundtrack yeah, let's, for let's, Spicy l- Takes? Let's, let's play it safe. I don't, right. want, I don't want to cause these people any more. Uh. <laughs> we got to get these Spicy Takes so we can answer some questions. Yes. Okay, you got the sound grab? I do have the sound grab. Let's get going. Ole, 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 ole. <laughs> Let's go for the. We two, got props. The two hundred twenty people that hug around got, yeah, two hundred twenty got to see the maracas. The maracas are in, mate. Amazon next day delivery fourteen ninety five. Get your own. <laughs> Worth it. Worth it. Let's go. Uh, let's. I'll start with you, the man with the maracas. What's your hot take for this week? Well, this time I don't want my hot take to come true. Oh, you go in the reverse moz. Let's. We. I'm going to reverse moz it here. <laughs> Maybe. Cherry has a stinker this week and Grundy has a good one. Ooh, we're, we're seeing the flip. Everyone trades out Grundy. Downward maracas. We don't want uh, it to happen, but if it was right, at least I get to say 
I did the spicy take. Yeah, there you go. So let's get the Maracas back upwards for your spicy <laughs> take. <laughs> mine's mine's the, what you did last week because I'm not going to get in Riley Bonner this week. And I am going to say that Riley Bonner is outscored not only by Jeremy Sharp, but also Colby McKercher and Riley Sanders. He oh. goes worse than all three of those rookies. And uh, the structure of the f- three rookies on field reigns supreme. That is my hot take. That's Drop your hot takes and your spicy takes down in the comments section Back below. All right, you, you, you look after those. Uh, let's, it's the red one, mate. Red for hot. Okay, questions. Get your questions in, guys, if you have some questions. Even if you've asked it before, drop them back in there and save us scrolling up. We will scroll up for the time being and answer some uh, questions from the top here. Um, This is a good one. Sasha asked the question here, Nuke or Wines, who goes first? Who are you trading out? Jai Nukem or Oli Wines? Yeah, both. Oh, man. Big that question. Is, it is a, good, it is a <laughs> really good one. Yeah, it is a bat. really, really good question. Um, is is the cop out way to answer it depends where you're going to go or that they're, they're they're not too dissimilar in price. When you can uh, a little bit more expensive. Thirty k. Or is it okay? So it's legitimate. Yeah, it's more than hundred k. Okay, I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm still going to say wines goes first. Do you think that the fact that we know Day's now out for a longer period helps that maybe Newcomb can get into a rhythm or? Yeah, I, I just think I have more confidence in him just being the number one guy. Um, it's true. It's the role is, is the a role's just more there. Um, we saw more of that ceiling in the preseason. I know it's the preseason, but he does look like someone who's a little bit more thirsty for the ball. The thirst is a bit more there for him than wines. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I, I think I'm going to go there. And there I was wish a, I was in that position that I was thinking about that trade. Yeah, there's a chance that he is someone that you still can hold on to through to luxury season, whereas Wines is definitely... He was never someone we considered to be a keeper in our team. So um, I'm going to back the preseason judgment on that one where they both came out with subpar scores. Oh, somebody's just straight up hit you. What were your trades, Mitch? Are you going to reveal Ooh. your trades straight up? Oh, I'll reveal my trades. They're nothing okay. very exciting. I'm going Brody Grundy to Tristan Sherry, which is, I think, the flavor of the week. Uh, and then I'm going Cam McKenzie out to an Oliver Dempsey. So you are going to go down, Max. Banking 271K. Okay. I might... Stop my idea, man. I might go Jai Clark to a... Um, a Dempsey and hold McKenzie for a week if Jai Clark is named the sub on the Friday night or he's dropped. I don't love holding on McKenzie, but again, with the best 18, there's a chance he pops a 90 or something like that. And that, yeah. that can help me. So if that's the case, that's probably what I'll do. But yeah, I think I'm going to prioritize getting in Dempsey. I've already got sharp. So just okay. trying to think long term. Okay. Um, Ethan wants to know, trade out Amon. Your thoughts? I, I, I'm giving Amon another week. I, yeah. I think that... You, you sort of referenced that they, they kicked very straight at Essendon. There wasn't too many kick-ins. Against this. Uh, against it. Essendon against Hawthorne. Yeah, yeah, but you were talking about Amon from Hawthorne. So Essendon kicked not many Oh, sorry, kicked behinds. straight in terms of behind. I thought you were talking yeah, about yeah. Hawthorne's, thought Hawthorne going more direct with the football. Yeah, yeah no, no, no. So, so Essendon <laughs> didn't kick too many behind, so there wasn't yeah. too many kick-ins. Yeah. Um, so like if, we, if, we, if there was like three more kick-ins for Amon and he scored, what he scored, an 80. So if he scores an 89... We're probably not discussing it. Not like thinking it's, about it as much it's, anyway. It's, I think it's easy enough for me to give that another week and, and give it a go. Okay. Wines to Dempsey via DPP to field sharp. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, so Wines to Dempsey is very aggressive in terms of cash generation. Yeah, and that's, then you're also going Caulfield down to house. So that's a lot of a lot of cash you're banking. I mean, I think cash. Caulfield down to house is a must. Um, I would definitely be doing that. This is this is it. this is a question from Luke. Um, and interesting. I think like typically we would kind of say that's way too much cash to pocket. But do you think the fact that it's best eighteen this week really does mean that if you going if you're making these corrections down to rookies from mid prices, you can get away with it? Like I almost don't know the answer. It's like it's it's a hard one. Uncharted um, territory. I'd be more in favor if. I mean, it depends what other issues you have. If wines is your worst issue, yeah, I, I don't know. I I would be maybe more tempted to go up to someone like a uh, s- someone like a, a Sarong, or I don't know if you if you don't have a Steel or a Butters or one of those players. Like, just get someone who's a, a proven premium, and it's a lot of money on the do bench. that one. Um, you, you're putting a rookie on field with with Hall. Uh, yeah, with Hall. No, was it Hall or House? House? House, I think it was. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a must must have. I think we need to have House. He's going to make a lot of cash for us. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm not too sold on a Caulfield, but it does feel like 
an excessive amount of cash. Like I feel a bit uncomfortable yeah. with 270K. If I was a double that, yeah, it's just a lot. Question here that you'll know a little bit about. Is it hat suicide? Uh, to trade in a red dot so that they can loop Gorn, Grundy, Jerry. Hat Suicide is your middle name, isn't it? <laughs> well, I did this in my <laughs> best year in this this year when I had 124. So maybe the answer is yes. <laughs> I don't know. It did. I did think it bit me in the ass to the end. However, I was still in contention, um, and that was when Nick Martin went huge and it had that 130. I had him on my bench, and I wanted to get that on my field. So yeah. I think in circumstances like that, I think it is doable it's feasible yeah only in those extreme circumstances you're gonna have to have like a ton on your on your bench to want to get onto your field for that to be the case um so otherwise cash generation is still the key um we should all have some red dots at least for for captaincies if it's to get a bench rookie on field it has to be a big score uh, what else we got? What else we got? Uh, wines to Holmes. Now, did you? I mean, Holmes. When again, when I watched the game, uh, re- rewatched it in, later in the week. Um, Holmes was everywhere to start the yeah. start the game. He definitely cooled down. I think in in the latter half of the game when that when it got a bit more fast paced and contested. Um, so, but I'm starting to become more converted. Yeah, I well, think. I think the difference between the score of 99 on the weekend and the, and the score in the practice match was, I think he took he had like 36 touches to get to his sort of 100 score in the... How many marks did he have? So he had did 10 you, marks, three yeah, he looked like he was tackles. everywhere with marks. So 10, 10 marks is not a sustainable thing, but, you know, he's got three tackles in there. And um, look, I, I'm going from probably not being big on it to definitely not talking people out of it if they want to go there. But I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't be going there from like an Amon or a Nick Martin or, or someone that you might not have been 100% happy with this week just to go there. Um, it'd be fixing up somebody who really stunk it up or like the role change, I guess. Let's answer MPD's question here. Um, is it a priority to get in Heaney if he's missed him? He still has wines at M5, which worries him, understandably so. This is a hard question. Um how much of a priority is Isaac Heaney if you've missed him? Now, MPD says he does have a Jackson at, at F1. So he does have uh, another big dog, um, yeah. and, and he chose to go that option over a Heaney. I think if you had your time over, you'd go Heaney over a Jackson. But it's a tough one. I guess for me, the, the, the answer or the question that I would throw back is, is it – what's your – forward line look like? Like, do you have someone like a McKenzie um, that's sitting there? If you could get a McKenzie up to a, a Heaney, I would tick that off 100% of the time. Yeah. But if you've got Zach Fisher, James Jordan, Sexton, um, you've got those kind of players sitting there or, or Billings or something like that, I, I think it's fine. I think you've got enough decent good cash generation that you don't have to do it. What if you were in a luxurious position and through DPP you could take like a Wines to a Heaney or something like that? Would that be something that you... That would 100% be something that I would definitely okay. look at. So okay. if you had like a James Jordan, most people have him, flick him into your midfield and, and put Heaney on, on, on your field through Wines. I yeah. think so it depends what else option. you've got to fix up and also explore DPP, I guess. Well, is it the looks like he MPDs. said he was going uh, Buderick off for D'Ambrosio. So hopefully that makes him a little bit of cash. I don't know if that will make it enough because you're going to need about, what's that, 120K, 100, yeah, 110K, 112 to yeah. make that make that move work. If it is possible, that would be, that'd be pretty, pretty nice. Yeah. Um, all right, let's move on to another question. What else have we got there? Um, can you rank Sharp Bonner, Billings, Sherry, Massimo only in terms of cash generation? So the rookies are the easiest and most guaranteed cash generation. As long as you feel reasonably sure of job security. Yes, correct. So in terms of if I was ranking those guys, I'd have Sharp at number one in terms of cash generation. Yeah. I think next I would have Sherry at number two for cash generation. Then I would then go. Um, where's the next one? Bonner, Billings, Massimo. Bonner, Massimo, and then Billings last. That's hard. that's. I know Billings has that sub game, but <laughs> coming up at one forty, that the, cash is going to be Let's look, look at his run though. If, if this is what I was looking at later this week, he's got the Hawks today, but then he comes up against Port Adelaide. Hawks then, today, Collingwood today. Sorry, not um, 
not today, but this weekend he's got Hawthorne. Not tonight, but t- this weekend. About, so, okay, so we're talking about... Yeah, Melbourne. So Melbourne play Hawthorne. Yeah. Then they play Port Adelaide, most restricted team in the comp, and yeah. also Adelaide. And Adelaide last year were one of the most... I think it was them and the Giants that um, conceded the least amount of marks. And obviously, when you take it 15 marks to get your scoring, that's what you need. And then he has Brisbane at the MCG. So... I think after the Hawthorne matchup this week, it gets quite tough for a player like Billings. And again, his role just very volatile. Um, So I think I'm backing in a few of those other guys there ahead. All right, so let's maybe do one more. Oh, we'll get a a couple more. I'll get a couple more. Two or three more in. All right, yeah, we did waste a bunch of time with tech difficulties. (laughs) (laughs) Who to prioritise out of Grundy, Newcomb, Caulfield or Clark? I know your answer is going to be Grundy, especially if if you don't have Cherry. I think if you don't have Sherry, that's the number one. If, well, if you, you do have Sherry, it's you're still maybe probably, a different story. You still probably want Grundy to go on, wouldn't you, after what you saw on the weekend. But Yeah, what are your thoughts on Caulfield and how high a priority is he, him? Because I, I know some people are sort of saying... It's tough where to it's go. It's like, it's nothing. He's kind of like a free hit. But the way I see Caulfield, if he's not going to score well, which I don't think he will, playing at Mars, that's not a friendly ground for defenders, he's got some money on his head that if he's not making cash, he's not scoring, well, what the hell is he doing for your team? Um, and this is the tough thing about Caulfield because he's just nothing. But I think the other tough thing about him is where, like that's been the conversation yeah. in preseason is is if you picked him to start, the issue was like, where were you going to go? So Shout out know. to Cade. Oh, thanks Cade. <laughs> Appreciate it. Cancel. So hot right now. Cancel. <laughs> so hot right now. Um yeah, it's like, okay, if you don't have House, then maybe that's a cash grab. House looks like he's going to be a rookie defender that's going to make us some cash. So, okay, cool. Yeah. You're not probably, I mean, you're not going up to Williams, especially not this week. You're not playing. It's so, probably D'Ambrosio. Yeah. Unless which, you don't have House. Like, if you don't have House. Which I don't mind, but I, it also might not be a priority for some people as well. Yeah. Um, I, I, I still lean that way. I don't know. I just I'm really quite down on on Caulfield and, and what he does for your, for your team, pretty much. Um, so the other ones that were there: Grundy, Newcomb, and Clark. Clark, which Clark are we talking about here? Um, there's too many Clarks. Uh, or Jordan Clark yeah, it could be Jordan. No, we're not not turning out Jordan Clark. Although there was. Um, it could be. Oh, it would be Jai Clark. It'd, It'd be, be Jai Clark, 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 right? Yeah. 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 Uh, Jai Clark. Look, if he's named. I think you just roll with him. You just let him do his thing. Hopefully, he gets a, a score. If he's dropped or if he's the sub, then I think I'd probably have him next if you don't have a Dempsey or a Sharp, which I don't think many of us would have both. So, those are probably the two I'd, I'd prioritize if Clark is is uh, dropped. Mac has got some good intel here that uh, Brennan Goddard was just on SEN saying that Billing, oh, sorry, that Sinclair is going to slot into his halfback role with maybe Ooh. just some little spurts into the midfield okay. as well. So, I, that I, tells me... I'm more convinced Dacos is probably going to get a tag. Okay, so Windhag. Well, I mean, Sinclair, I, I think regardless of who they were playing, Sinclair was probably going to slot into that role. Some people thought differently, but um, I, I agree with you. I, I expected that Yeah. or thought that. Um, I think you'll still do a bit of both, but yeah, that's interesting. Uh, question uh, here. Can I hold Buderick for one more week so that I can bring in Sharp instead of D'Ambrosio? <sighs> That is really tough because Buderick gave an absolute stinker. Buderick, and he's got a buy next week. So what's yeah. Buderick's break even? So you've essentially got just... It's break even 71, which could hit. It's at Mars, though. Again, like that. And he's not going to make that... A guy he, priced that you He want. strikes me as a small potato kind of type of player. <laughs> like wow. in stature and in role. I mean, so you if, he, if he's already dropped a 20s score, mm. and he's going to a ground where we know small halfbacks can drop 20s, yeah, it's not good. It's not great. So um, you, would, you would forego getting Sharp to be able to get some uh, oh, here instead. What's your other trade? <laughs> like, if this was a situation where... Sorry, we'll just wait while that person yeah, talks well, about <laughs> This might be a situation where maybe your other trade, you've locked in a Grundy to Sherry. This might be a situation where I might hold Grundy and get a Sherry with... Uh, sorry, get a Clark. Uh, not, not a Clark. Get a Sharp with someone else and then get Butterick out. Um I really don't want to have Butterick in my team who's got a buy next week. He's not going up in price at a ground where he's probably not going to score that great either. I know it's against the Dogs. So maybe you could talk yourself yeah. into it. I don't know. How windy is it? Like, let's check the weather. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's... it's oh, man, That's I hate making these tough calls. Um, let's go last one here. So, uh, with that Sinclair news, what are our thoughts on Bonner going forward? This is selfish for me because... 
I don't know about the Bonner going forward thing, but I think the bit that's like tipping me over the edge is that I have to lock this in tonight. Yeah. And I think that's the bit that's just making me say, like, if if instead I can go down, pocket some cash and get a rookie that I feel really good about their job security now for, for me in yep. Sharp um, or for others in Dempsey, potentially, um, I'm just going to cop having yep. a bit of money in the bank on a round where only the best 18 count just with that somewhat uncertainty. And then that always presents next week if we see Sinclair in there and we see that Bonner is just still a gun. I think it won't be too late. Like, I think, yeah, I, I think you can still jump on there. Um, but worst case scenario is like you've locked in your trade on Thursday night, Sinclair goes in there, Bonner goes forward or Bonner just doesn't score as he was previously. You've then missed your fix-up rookie in Sharp or in Dempsey, whoever it is that you need to fix up and you go, fuck, well, you know, what yeah. was I thinking? So... I think that's I agree kind of where there. I'm at. I, th- I think I think with this news, and I was kind of leaning that way anyway. I would be prioritizing getting Sharp or Dempsey. That's the way I'm going to be playing it. Whether it's the right way, oh, uh, we will man. find out. Don't but expect us to be given the in, right advice. In terms of cash, like uh, um, I think if if Sharp or or Dempsey, if they go fifty fifty five, they're making fifty k. Yeah. Um, Bonner has to do 80, 90. Too. Bonner has to do 90 plus to do that. Yeah. Now, he might do that. Yeah. And if he does that, then that's a good score on your ground as well. So that's the that's the reward for the risk. But it's far more likely, I think, that you see him go like 70 than you see someone like a, a Sharp go 30, um, just yeah. based on the matchup, based on the, the opponent and things like that. So um, that's I, I think it's just a bit more hedging your bets. Um, and then you've also probably pocketing a bit more cash, giving you more flexibility for next week. So... That's how I'm playing it. We'll see how it all works out in the end. Thank you for sticking around, people. Sorry that we had all those technical difficulties in the middle. I'm not. It wouldn't sh- be a show without it, mate. It wouldn't. I, I don't know. Maybe we'll get one that goes smoothly one of these days. But I don't even know whether to go to the subscribe screen to stuff it up. Maybe yeah. we'll just we'll leave it on this screen and we'll just finish the podcast here. So <laughs> you do your little outro, Mitch, and we the outro yeah. music might not even fucking play. But thank you, 268 people sticking around, which is. We really appreciate yeah, thank it. Thank you so. very much, guys. Hit the thumbs up video if you enjoyed today's podcast and live show. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And we will be back at you guys reviewing the round on a Monday night. And after this week, we are back on to the... We're back on to our regular Friday shows. Normal time slot of 5 p.m. Uh, Australian Eastern Daylight Time. Until next time, we'll see you guys later. Bye.